Welcome to Wise Beyond Bitcoin, your home for the crypto neo news, education, and opportunities. My name is Ryan. My name is Lucas. And as you know, there are opportunities with the news. And one of the news stories that we've been covering for a long time is what's going on in traditional markets, what's going on in blockchain, DeFi, and CeFi, how they're related, and how you can better prepare yourself for what's coming down the road. One of these subjects that we've covered for a long time, A, that the tradition that, that blockchain crypto markets are heavily, heavily leveraged with institutional capital um, and, and hedge funds. And the effects that it has when you talk about um, the, the traditional markets going through a contraction, how is that going to affect the blockchain and crypto markets? And of course, another story we've covered is the major three arrows capital major collateral debacle margin call and the effects that's having. Um, and so here we are. Yeah. And, and speaking of CFI, we talked about Celsius and we'll talk about them again, but Voyager, these are, this is another CFI. Now for people who are new to crypto or blockchain and you hear CFI and DeFi, what is CFI versus DeFi? What are, what are the differences? Mainly? So these these uh, terms refer to centralized and decentralized. So centralized finance and decentralized finance. And to get your, to really separate the two, uh, you could think of, and one way to think of the difference is, is that centralized finance is going to have some connection to the traditional financial world. And we're, looking, so we're talking about Wall Street or venture, venture capital money. We're talking about, um, you know, credit lines, uh, loans, uh, leverage, right? Leveraged positions on borrowed capital. We're talking about um, all the traditional regulations and um, know your customer standards that apply to any kind of financial transaction. That, so that's that world. And, th and then you see centralized exchanges, Coinbase is an is obvious one. There's there's uh, the the you know Michael Saylor's and the and the, uh, and the 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 attempt to make an ETF. There's Bitcoin futures. So there's a lot of quasi traditional financial um, companies and products that still have a foot in the crypto world. And so that's kind of what we're referring to there. And the DeFi is is the world that's that's everything else essentially the the, the Web three MetaMask you know. Um, browser wallet or or you know oh you never have to give your you never you can participate in exchanges and providing liquidity with never actually giving up your custody of your of your money or your tokens to any third party you can just connect with your wallet to a web3 con smart contract and then stake or provide liquidity or, or a swap and there's all this these all these um financial products that are available to people and it's a be what it's a do it yourself, be your own bank kind of world. And and this and these two worlds are not completely separated. They might seem like that, but there's there's actually a whole lot of integration. And mm -hmm. so much of what's happening in DeFi uh, is is driven by flows of finance that come from the centralized side. And so yeah, it's easy to get swooped up in these whale games if you're not savvy to what's going on. So that's kind of what we're here to do is to give a picture kind of give a big picture view of what's going on in the C in the traditional markets. And so you can kind of make an, a, an educated assumption about what's going on in crypto. And the big story is that Voyager has suspended customer withdrawals, uh, just like three, uh, just like three arrows capital. And I'm sorry, and, and also Celsius is the one. So these are big moves. And what it means is, is that if you didn't, if you don't, it's the old saying in crypto, not your, if you don't own the keys, then you don't own the coins, right? So it's, it's if you, if you don't, if your wallet is on a, a centralized exchange and, or, and they're giving you some kind of reward for, for keeping your money there, or you just have it parked there for nothing, you don't really own that money. And it, you're actually a creditor. You're, you're seen legally, not as a, a customer that has a, a claim on that asset, but rather you're seen as like a creditor. And you know the point we like to make is is that you're at the back of the line. If if this goes to liquidation, if this if this entity goes bankrupt, and those assets are sold off, then whatever you had in your wallet gets pulled into that. That becomes collateral. Those are assets that that entity is going to sell to make their and creditors and investors whole. And you probably will be at the end of the line, which means when they run out 
it's the people at the front of the line that get made whole and not you. So this now, is a big story. You just brought up a huge story because that, that brings up a theory that some people conspired to, um, to create these huge opportunities of taking a bunch of retail money. Because basically Celsius, Voyager, there are these, in, there are these intermediaries that popped up like you said, AML, KYC, this is CFI, which means they took a bunch of easy money from retail, not, uh, not institutional investors. And right. um, because these CFI platforms went belly up, they locked all the funds of those retail investors that had access right. from their bank accounts. And, and these were Voyager Celsius, these were the main avenues other than Coinbase is still rocking and cracking. There are others that are still functioning. But these are some of the major avenues by which retail was able to get into blockchain and crypto and were considered to be relatively in the world. The, safe, the safer way, right? You know, now, we never recommend trading. This is not a trading channel. Everything we do is educational entertainment. And we look for participating in technologies and communities for the macro long term that you support. Um, and so that's one thing we don't go for trading. And we also um, are about your keys, your wallet and about the technology. So, in, you know, when it comes to CFI, we'll talk about the projects that are out there and, and what they do, but we've never had a referral link or, you know, recommended right. that you go um, give your funds. Because at the end of the day, this is the opposite of what blockchain and crypto and DeFi was supposed to be able to achieve. You should not need an intermediary to um, store your Bitcoin or your crypto or to provide liquidity and, and to engage in a lot of other um, financial. Well, it, it's, it's kind you know. of ironic that we're seeing these centralized plat platforms uh, being, you know, sh showing how risk, how much risk was embedded in them and leverage. And because a lot of people chose this route because it was seen to be safer, right? I mean, we right. hear about MetaMask's hacks, or you hear about, you know, bridges being hacked, or you hear about um, pump and dumps and, and, and providing liquidity and then, you know, uh, in permanent loss or front running or, met, you know, minor extracted value. There's a thousand and one ways to lose your position in Web3, in a Web3 environment, right? So a lot of people are, are you know, turned off by some of these, these, things you have to become familiar with, right? There's a learning curve. And so they think, well, we'll just, let me just go to the KYC AML centralized route. I'll still have a play on crypto, but I'm not gonna have to worry about controlling my keys or worrying about my MetaMask wallet, maybe has a bug or you know, fill in the blank, right? So this is a, definitely a, a safer, seem to be safer. But in a lot of things, we find that there's hidden risks that you never, I mean, like look at Lunaterra, stable coin, Massive market cap. People, you know, moved into Luna Terra because they saw the crypto was probably going to take a dip, and they were wanting to take, you know, take a safe, uh, put their money in a safe storage, a safe place, right? Looking for safety, and it come to find out there was a lot of risk embedded there. So, you know, I think that's the kind of the theme here is that there's uh, that anytime you're dealing with a counterparty, that you know, as any kind of whether it's a foundation, Luna, you know, foundation, or it's Celsius and, or three it's good arrows. Thing you brought that up because Terraform Foundation, the, you know, the way yeah. they acted with going out and acquiring capital and making choices to buy Bitcoin, this is very much not in the same operation as an Ave or a Curve right. or a Uniswap AMM that's completely run um, at the right. you know, at the protocol level. So. Um, it, it's good to show that to know the difference between this, the institutional and the intermediary risk that's out there. And just because it uses the blockchain or there are blockchain assets associated with, or maybe they even have a, a blockchain wallet that you can send and receive to. If it's not your keys or if it's um, not decentralized, if it's not um, open source, if it's not. Then it's risky. Um, there, there, and even there, yeah, it's, it's risky. And here's, so these are the risks we're talking about with Voyager. They had uh, exposure to a loan to crypto three arrows capital. It's uh, fifteen thousand bitcoins, three hundred fifty million USDC, and these these loans have been defaulted on. So they're going to pursue uh, some legal action to get their to get their 
you know, to recover their investment. Um, we'll see how that plays out. We do know that there will, you know, as that, if, if this goes to liquidation, that's going to push, you know, these assets will be, will be sold off to cover these loans. Uh, that's going to push down prices in crypto, right? And that, that kind of brings us to the next, to a seg, it's a segue to the very next story. And this, I'll let you take it from here because I know this is de- near and dear. Well, the idea is, uh, you know, um, right now, you, as you mentioned before the video, uh, Three Arrows Capital, Voyager, there are people out there that are looking for lenders. They're saying, hey, um, there are some of, we're, we've been affected by defaulters. And we need some help out there to, to push us through these hard times. Well, right now, as you mentioned, interest rates are going up. There's not the liquidity is drying up. There's not a lot of money out there. And people definitely are more wary of what they want to invest in at these prices and these market conditions. So what, what's, what's more likely that Goldman Sachs or um, another intermediary is going to come in and loan you money to shore up your investment? Or are they going to sit by and wait for you to default so that they can come in and scoop up the, the same assets at pennies on the dollar. And, and that's kind of the theory that some people believe that when you get up to these higher levels of Voyager and Celsius and Mashinsky and, and, and the purpose of you know, these platforms are, are these long ball plays to, to um, default and to um, give Goldman Sachs and some of these other larger institutional players an opportunity to come scoop up the the same the retail the assets. retail money right the retail money take take yeah. money directly from retail and buy these crypto assets at pennies on the dollar not right. that a story like that is beneath uh, activities in the world of finance and, and what goes on in in markets um, it's definitely um, a, a very very what do you say? It's, highly... it's they're very cynical, I guess. Way to way to buy. Well, no, I, but I mean that in the world of finance and markets, it's they're very cutthroat, and it's very. It's no, very, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's what I mean. I don't mean you I don't mean the narrative is cynical. I mean the point of view that would think, you know, let's let's do it this route. You know, that's that's a it's kind of a um, well, yeah, it's a very cutthroat way to view, view things, like you said. Yeah. And, Who knows? Either way, uh, there was default. Now, I, I mentioned this because. We talked about Aave, Curve, Uniswap, and Bitcoin's never, you know, Ethereum. When people in traditional markets uh, like Yellen or uh, uh, Gary Gensler from the SEC, when people come out and talk about regulation and the need to regulate, um, where do you feel regulation, the idea of regulation with all these, you know, things happening, is the risk and the regulation, the oversight needed for DeFi and and individual no, new innovative it's blockchain for these, platforms. It's, it's or, for these massive centralized, um, you know, le- highly leveraged, you know, debt debt leveraged entities right. that are plant that are taking retail money through a KYC AML sort of fr- framework. So and then and then using it to take you know to opt, take take positions, often leveraged positions, and they're paying out a, an APR. So this is very much a traditional financial kind of uh, play. And so why shouldn't, why shouldn't the, the government, the SEC, the CFTC, whoever the, the relevant entity is, why shouldn't they uh, regulate that? And, and if like, to your point, you know, these are the spaces that are blowing up. You know, you don't, it's not Aave that's having the problem. It's not uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum that's melting down and, and causing these problems. It's, it's these uh, derivatives. It's, it's these centralized hedge funds, crypto hedge funds really is what it is. And, and, the, and we're seeing that they made some bad bets on some on, at the very height of, of prices and those prices of, on that stuff come down. Those, and those bets are now, those bets are no longer good and they're, and they're being margin called and, and liquidated. And clearly that there, you know, there's a, that's the kind of entity that, is already in every other dimension, every other domain of the economy is regulated. So why why should they be different, right? I, I agree. I feel that um, it's that regulation it can be a, a great thing, and I think the idea will continue this talk. But that healthy regulation 
um, ideal regulation is regulation where the regulators are focused on those exact same companies, those exact same intermediaries that they're already used to regulating. They're already used yeah. to regulating um, intermediaries. Um, so if there's the Celsius, the Voyager, the Coinbase, the Kraken, if there is a, a, a corporation, if there's a business that's involved with receiving funds from people and using it to purchase crypto, then that I feel is where the regulation, the announcement of regulation, but considering how little is understood about blockchain and crypto projects and how the levels of decentralization can be arbitrary, whether it's through validators yeah. and stakers or through uh, miners and, and concentration of miners or concentration of Bitcoin held in, in wallets and custody. So a lot of these conversations are, are, are still young and, and unanswered. The questions are unanswered. I feel that regulation at the protocol level towards blockchain and crypto would be immature and cause more harm than good because as most people understand blockchain and crypto, it's decentralized protocols, whether it's miners or stakers or DeFi, it's something that's cross-border, cross-jurisdiction, code is law and allowing networks to develop with, with people coming together and allowing that participation to take place and to seeing which of these succeed, which of these do not, and for what reasons that that area of development, I feel should be research in the world of research and science and knowledge should be promoted and upheld. And there are many ways that you can still have regulation directed at those entities that are in the business of you know, uh, being custodians of people's funds or, uh, you know, holding, right. requiring digital assets for them. Um, but, but still but leave the allow, other side free, yeah. but still allow, right. And it just makes more sense because there's not enough knowledge, even people in the, in the world, in the business of regulation, you can only know so much. There's no way you can also be astute and up to date on the latest developments of a brand new technology that people are just now starting to figure out. Yeah. Even the people yeah. in crypto don't understand you know, even the, the coders the and next, developers, right? What the next thing will be and what it's going to ultimately look like. We're going to follow up on that in another in subsequent videos. That'll be a, a theme we will return to. But um, um, uh, last segue, um, just like Goldman Sachs and others are pro, are are waiting for these margin calls and these uh, de deleveraging to take place. And this is a topic we'll continue to talk about. We've been saying it for a long time. So if we feel it will help you. In, is in your journey as you learn about blockchain and crypto and, and how to participate and when to participate. You have time to do your own research. There are some great opportunities right now and coming forward. And, yep. and, and that's really what we want to leave with is that Goldman Sachs, these intermediaries, they recognize that while there may be margin calls and problems, they're there to scoop up a lot of these digital assets on pennies on the dollar. So why we come for that macro long-term perspective is that if you're here right now, you have the ability to look at the future technology, the building blocks of the future and participate, be a part of that before the next major wave of adoption and growth takes right. place. And we'll definitely take you there because there are some projects that are building right now, not even roadmaps, like working, utility, interoperability. Yeah, we got playlists to walk you through it, um, of right. course. One of our favorites, I'll, I'll just do a shout out now is to Secret Network and a lot of the dApps will, we have to follow up there just because one of the biggest innovations moving forward, I think for the next bull run will be privacy. And the, and the, as more people understand blockchain and crypto, the need for privacy in the blockchain, more influencers, educators, it'll be more of a talk. And these applications built on Secret Network, whether it's their NFTs, whether it's Alter and, and private messaging or Jackal Dow. And now I'm just running through them right now, Legend Dow. But the reality is, and there's a lot more, IBC ecosystem and Ethereum. So uh, without going into all of it now, you know what to do if you want to stay abreast of the latest. You can subscribe, notification bell, thumbs up. Know that none of this is financial advice, commercial advice, legal advice, marital advice, medical advice, just educational entertainment information and uh, give us some love. That's about it. We love All you right, back. Till the next time, have a beautiful day. Namaste. Thank you.